just so everyone knows, obviously, we all have companies that we work at and work for. Anything that we discuss in this session, uh, disclaimer, is not necessarily representative of the companies that we work for. We're just a couple of folks getting together to talk about Domo Governance and the Domo Governance Toolkit with the star of the show, Carl Altern. Carl, who are you? What do you do? What's your deal? Hi, Jay. Thank you very much for the introduction. I am very excited to be here today speaking to all these fine folks about governance. Uh, governance is um, my passion topic very close to my heart, and I'm very fortunate to be able to uh, do governance um, at Domo. Um, really, in, in my role at Domo, you can sort of think of me as an advocate for the customer. I spend a lot of my time speaking to Domo's customers, understanding their governance challenges, and then um, translating uh, those challenges across to, to where they can be sort of product enhancements. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of time that I spend with our customers, with our product team, um, and, uh, and sort of combining the two. You were, I kind of, before this call started, I was asking you like, what is a day in Carl's life? What does that actually look like for somebody who, you know, does data governance, what what do you actually do from day to day at Domo? So most of my time will be spent speaking with customers. Um, I spend a lot of time understanding their, their use cases, their challenges. Um, you know, the, the, I think that Domo has quite a lot of um, customer facing bodies, right? We have, we have consultants, we have TSM, CSM, salespeople, and so on and so forth. Really where I get brought in is where the, the governance challenge is, is particularly tough. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that the, the customer has a, a rather unique use case, or perhaps they are um, they're pushing the envelope a little bit in terms of what Domo can provide um, in, in, in governance. Um, so I'll be brought in to sort of help solve those challenges. Um, and then once those challenges have been resolved, there's an element then of documenting what we've done and, and creating training materials videos and so on and so forth. So that work can easily be reused in the future by TSM mm -hmm. consultants and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I guess kind of building on that a little bit, right? We see Domo taking on more, um, I guess, enterprise accounts or sophisticated account accounts that might have, as you said, curly uh, use cases. Um, and as we see Domo kind of expanding the breadth of tooling that they have available, whether it's um, Domo Everywhere, right, which initially started with, what was it, pub groups, then expanded to Embed and um, Domo Publish, right? As we see the expansion of all these product offerings, um, where do you see Domo really differentiating itself from like traditional BI visualization tooling? And then also like, how do we feel like we compare in, in terms of like the, other big data platforms? Sure, I, you know, Domo, as Domo is an end-to-end -end BI platform, there are already a number of differences there and 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 there are a number of opportunities, I guess, that are afforded to Domo in, in that capacity. Um, certainly the fact that Domo Stats uh, provides sort of end-to-end -end visibility on the entire BI uh, stack is, is a unique opportunity, I think, for Domo, and it gives us certainly an advantage um, over our competitors and in, in terms of providing observability um, to our customers across the, across all of their BI. Um, yeah. I'd also say additionally, the the governance toolkit itself is is also a competitive advantage that we have. Um, as as I'm sure we'll probably talk about later on the, on this call, a lot of the capabilities in the governance toolkit are not necessarily groundbreaking, right? A lot of it could have been done um, using the CLI, or if you are particularly savvy, you could do it using the APIs. Um, and and a lot of our competition, uh, it's it's the same, right? You can use APIs to do some of these these governancey kind of use cases. But but really, where the governance toolkit differentiates itself is that it's been designed like like the entirety of Domo, right? It's been designed with the business user first, right? It's very easy to use. It's a no right. code, no code kind of build. Um, mm -hmm. It integrates seamlessly with data flows. So if you have your 
funky complex business logic to define who's in what group you can put that into a data flow and then use that to power your your job in the governance toolkit so i would say that that really that focus on the business user on the governance toolkit is is, is where we differentiate ourselves yeah nice and then um Ben, since you've been around Domo for so long, both as a customer and then I mean, maybe I should let you introduce yourself first. Oh. Ben, <laughs> my unexpected guest. Uh, <laughs> do you want to really quickly introduce yourself and then I'll just drop a quick question on you? Did I just say Carl's boss? Is that nice? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, ben Chine, Vice President of Data Curiosity. Um, worked for Darren Thane, our CTO among many things, sort of focus on strategic architecture, governance, pipelines, data culture, um, sort of the white space between product, I like to say, um, which I think okay. governance is very much that, right? That's how that. we put it all together. Um, I guess when you think about, and I guess let's open for both of you, as you think about Domo over the years where we started and where we've come, where have you, in terms of governance, where, in the past X years, what would you say was the biggest successful kind of investment and growth? And then looking into the future, where do you see as kind of like the biggest growth opportunity in terms of um, giving more governance power to the user base? So I'll, I guess I'll go first. Yeah, I'll go first yeah. ben. Um, you, for me, I, I definitely think it's Sandbox. I mean, we've, we've mm. had for a long time uh, the opportunity to have multiple instances. You know, some of our larger customers have had, you know, they've got like hundreds of instances. So that, that's not particularly groundbreaking in of itself. But what is, I think, groundbreaking is that that Sandbox really has opened up the door for a lot for, for all of our other customers to do that now and to do it very easily, right? Um, Transfer just, content between instances, you mean? That's right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like um, I am now working with I, almost every single customer now that I work with is is having multiple instances because Sandbox has enabled that by trans, by allowing them to very easily transfer uh, stuff between instances, right? You know, you could already transfer data sets, um, but now you can virtualize data sets if you don't want to have extra rows. You can transfer across your data flows very easily, your pages very easily. And with the governance toolkit as well, we have um, a tool for observability metrics, which allows you to bring in all of your Domo stats from uh, from your, like multiple instances into a main instance to give you a single view on on everything that's happening across your entire like Domo ecosystem. And just to drill into that, just for half a second, for those people who are not aware of the difference between Sandbox and Publish, what would you say is the key core use case for Publish versus a core use case for Sandbox? Uh, so I think the core use case for Publish is to push out some, uh, it's like a, maybe a data app, you might call it something like mm -hmm. that, perhaps it's it's like a, a page. Uh, content focused. Content it's content. Focused. Yeah, so a page with like some data sets that power the pages, right? Um, mm -hmm. Whereas for Sandbox, you can do other things, like you can push out data flows, which you can't do with, um, with, with Publish. Mm -hmm. And then Ben, uh, to circle back to the original question, what would you say was the biggest improvement in governance in the last X couple of years and the biggest opportunity for development in the coming years? Yeah, so um, so I will actually say that it's a small thing. My favorite thing we've done, the most innovative thing, impactful, maybe not innovative, is group ownership. Right, I don't- Group ownership? I, I, I don't, I like push my team to push myself to use it more. Like we're so used to individual adding of saying like, this is a group of developers they're the owner of the page this is the group of consumers and just that little I, I feel like we don't do it enough we pushed it in the innovation summit event um so i think that's a small thing that actually has huge impact on, on how those things happen obviously sandbox was big i think in some ways like we've been a victim of our own success and that we've made it really easy to change things and also really um have gotten a lot of really um even high profile like the ceo or something users and so the mm -hmm. people are scared almost to change things, right? You don't want to mess yeah. up, you don't want to do halfway, right? So some of this versioning muscle or sandbox, I think, as much has to do with unlocking innovation that's been stunted because we're too scared to change things because we've been too successful getting people to use it, right? And so there's sort of mm -hmm. that muscle. Um, and then I think looking forward, we're in the process of sort of rewiring our total access control model to be more attribute-based. Um, so nice. a lot of that work on the back end is finishing up this year. And so 
over the course, I think, of the next year, you'll start seeing in the UI um, that ability to be more granular with your access control. So rather than saying, I am able to edit cards in the whole instance, you could say, this group of people can edit this group of content or is an owner for this, right? So I think, and that was a lot of, to do it right, it was a lot of back-end wiring. Right? Nice. So a lot of that back-end stuff is starting to come to completion. The unfortunate part about it is it's like, hey, we do the back end, but it's, you know, then it's like, oh, now we actually have to take it that last mile, but it's, it's exciting stuff. Be still my heart. That actually, I'm excited for that. That's yeah. cool. Um, Carl, uh, let's jump in, I think, a little bit into the actual tools that are available in Domo. Um, you know, obviously, well, I don't want to say obviously, high level, could you give a quick overview of some of the free tooling? that exists outside of the Domo user interface that people can take advantage of. And then let's jump into the premium tooling in a, in a short bit. Yeah, sure thing. So I guess rather than jumping into the, the toolkit, because there is a free tool there, I'll talk about that one in a moment. I think that otherwise the um, one of, one of the, the, one of my favorite tools, I guess, go to free tools would be the CLI. Mm -hmm. um, so CLI is the command line interface. It's a um, it's a bit more of a user friendly way to interact with the Domo APIs. Um, the the CLI is is excellent for um, for I guess programmatically executing a number of tasks, which um, which perhaps are not so easy to do without without a bit of scripting. Um, yeah. But it it does make it nice and easy. Um, I, I would say a recommendation for those of you who want to use the CLI after this call is do download it and 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 use it um, before you go to the the help articles in in the, the knowledge base. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. It, I think that the knowledge base articles could do with a bit of an update, but um, the the help in in the CLI itself is excellent, and it has um, it has all of the commands there, and they're nicely and well documented. What would you say is uh, the top three um, uses of the CLI, just for people who've never used it before and they're like, I'm not a coder, that's not my realm. What would you say are three common uses of the CLI that anyone could relate to? Um, so I think you can you can use it very easily to remove users and to, and to transfer um, ownership of, of content from one user to another. Mm. That one's a good one. Um, programmatically, you could use it to delete content like cards, um, pages, uh, data sets. I mean, there are ways that you can do it in bulk using Domo, but this gives you a, a nice alternative um, approach. And then, um, of course, you can use it for copying data sets between instances. Right. Um, that, one's, that one's quite neat too. Yeah, uh, one of the issues that came up in the dojo very recently because we're just now ending daylight savings or starting daylight savings, I forget what we're doing. Um, I had a client in Europe who they needed their data data sets to all trigger exactly at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., whatever it was. And because of daylight savings, you know, it, it, the schedule was pushed back an hour. And they were like, oh, it's it's it needs to trigger at 5 a.m., no matter if it's daylight savings or not. And I said, well, I you know, you could obviously you need to update all of your schedules, but you could also just build a job that runs 5 a.m. according to the clock on your computer and then have it loop through all of your data sets and trigger execution, um, which they ultimately ended up doing. And so they have a job on their desktop that triggers execution instead of relying on Domo's scheduling framework, which you know we can talk later if that's actually a good long-term solution, but it just got them through um, the, the week till they could update all of the schedules. So that was a classic you know, Java CLI use case that isn't super nerdy that I think a lot of people could relate to as well. Um, in addition to the CLI, is there other tooling that's free that you find yourself reaching for? Um, certainly not, I don't find myself reaching for it anymore, but there was certainly, there, there would have been a time where um, where I used the, the Java, uh, sorry, the, the Domo APIs um, okay. to, to execute tasks. Um, in the past, I've used the APIs to create and manage group membership. Um, oh, okay. There's some pretty good documentation on how to do that. And there's also the, um, the PDP utility, 
which is a uh, it's also a, a Java a Java thing that you can use for applying PDP uh, in Domo. Um, I, I will just say though that like in order to use these and the APIs generally, you'd have to be pretty technical, um, and you'd also of course need some sort of Java machine to to run these on. Yeah, uh, Ben, what about you? Any really cool free um, uses of Domo tooling that kind of you see customers taking advantage of outside of the premium toolkit? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, like I said, like some of it's just like using the concept of group ownership, dynamic groups, integrating with SSO, right, in your active directory and bringing in right, okay. information. Um, you know, and obviously, again, people use CLI, people use the Python package, um, other things, but it's, um, you know, I think the interesting thing for me and a lot of the genesis in the women's book, it also was that even at our largest companies, no one really wants to deal with, like, like you could set up a VM box, and you could run the script, you could run the PDP utility, and so, and, and this is part of why it's, it's, it's not hugely expensive, but it's slightly premium is because we're essentially doing that infrastructure for you, but people, even at big companies that have that resources, it's so much easier. You know, just figure out how to run in Domo, even if it costs a little bit more, um, mm -hmm. because it's just a pain, right? Even, even when you do, and then we know there's a whole group of people that aren't as technical who wouldn't, you know, would try to run the CLI or have a infrastructure to set up a virtual machine to, to run the PDP utility. And, um, and so a lot of that, the muscle behind this was going after that, as well as sort of giving us a platform to continue to push new useful tools out um, that run sort of on our back end, um, what we call executor, sort of the, the back end service of, of governance, really even for Sony, right? We had done different sort of custom things and then we created an app to be the front end. And so this is like, how do we have a place where we can do more common automation tasks and sort of almost sell a piece of our server automation um, as part of it? Um, so I know I was getting into the paid stuff, but I think I look on the free stuff, I think it's it's group management, it's, it's integrating with SSO. Like those to me are the big ones that let you still pretty effectively govern um, mm -hmm. you know, things. And then if you have trusted attributes and stuff, then you can do a P2P policy on that. So maybe it's not perfect, but you don't have to automate it as much and stuff like that. So nice. Yeah. Um, um, go I ahead, think Carl. Ben, ben makes a, a really good point, right? Like the, the number of customers realistically who use the CLI for their governance functions would be would be tiny, right? It would be a very small amount. Most of the governance capabilities are are out of the box in Domo. It, it is the the group ownership um, and roles, single sign on connection. Um, that's definitely like that. That's where most of our customers would would sort of leverage the governance capabilities. Well. I mean, the ones that you hear of, right? Everyone who's doing it successfully without you guys is probably you don't hear of as much unless you're able to track traffic from uh, what is executed from the CLI versus not. True. Um, OK, anyway, but let's do a transition then. I mean, I did promise that we would get into some of the premium tooling. Um, Ashley had asked earlier, you know, why was the governance toolkit developed? And I think, Ben, you kind of started to answer that, which was to say, hey, to have automated um, governance, right? You have to have a framework where you're triggering a job that occurs every hour and then it does stuff in Domo. And you can either do that on your VM, your box at home, but that requires your, your computer to be on all the time and you know you can't miss a day. Right. Whereas if you host this infrastructure in Domo land, right, it's kind of all covered and there is a cost associated with that infrastructure. And so maybe that's a strong reason for the governance toolkits premium. Um, but Carl, do you have any other thoughts to add to why the toolkit was developed um, or where the first use cases were that said, hey, we need to have a tool that gets this job done? Yeah. So. I mean, maybe once again, Ben is better to answer this question because he was certainly closer to it than I was. But but we did have a customer in particular who who did have governance challenges that I think that they were aware that these governance challenges could be solved using the APIs. But but it probably got to the point where they're like, no, we need you guys to develop something in the platform that can do this. Um, 
so that we don't need to worry about having a, a JVM. And so they they had a number of use cases that ended up becoming the first set of tools in mm. in the governance toolkit. Um, Is there any way then, you could talk about those without giving away the name of the customer? We don't know. We can pretend like it's Onyx reporting. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, tagging I, I think was was one of the um, was one of the first ones that um, that they they needed and has sort of survived until now. Um, data set PDP, tagging. Yeah, data set tagging, automated tagging. Yep. Um, PDP automation was another one. PDP automation would have been one of the first tools that um, that we sort of brought in, and and I would say that 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 was probably because the PDP utility existed, so we mm -hmm. already had a lot of the logic and the code there to, and, to make it yeah. work. And they actually, I mean, they tested it, right? They went and tested it and they just like, well, we don't want to have to go find a third and run this on, even at a multi-billion dollar company, right? Um, and so that was part of it, that, that sort of origin story was like, okay, that makes sense. You don't want it to deal with it. You want it to happen with a domo. How do we create a space that lets that happen? And then tagging, group management, those other things sort of came from it. Got it, okay. Well, I mean, we're halfway through the, the, the session today um carl would you be able to talk to a couple of the i know there's seven or eight you uh different tools are there some that you're going to cover and show us today yeah sure thing well why don't i um why don't i share my screen and uh i'll, I'll bring it up all right cool so i'm in inside one of our testing instances here and this is the uh governance toolkit actually i'll i'll go back to the um uh, to the admin screen so you can see how I got here, right? So admin screen under governance, there's toolkit. Um, everyone should have access to the toolkit button. Um, it's just that when you open it up, rather than seeing a whole bunch of tools under your tools, instead you'll see most of the tools or probably all of the tools will be under available tools and um, and where it's premium, and lay, you know, that's premium. Um, so, yeah, there's about nine tools, I think, and we've just recently started, well, almost finished work on, on this new tool for the dataset watchdog. So I'm quite excited for when that's um, available for use. But and in the meantime... Just, just to call out, the way we've been doing pricing is that there's like a sort of a percent of recurring revenue, but it, it's sort of a one time, you get the premium feature. So as we add new ones, we generally just like you get, you buy into that sort of future collection of tools. Um, it's not like per tool or whatever like that. Ah, uh, so the trick is to buy it while your ARR is cheap, and then well, you I pay it once, we're, and then we're not we're not commercial people. You figure out your sales guy and ah. put it in and whatever it is. But yes, but I will say, look, I mean, we certainly look at that to the extent of like as this drives some revenue to support the upkeep and the innovation on new tools that helps Matt Payne and the lab team and us make that case that look, there's value here. Um, we can cover any cost around it and so like it does make a difference but i let you guys commercials i'm lucky i don't have to deal with commercials you guys can talk to your account executives and if they owe you a favor you figure out that favor and we don't have anything to do with that so nice <laughs> okay so wait we're we're in the toolkit and i see there's several of them and and okay sorry let me not talk you go <laughs> all good. Um, so there are a lot of tools. I'm not going to talk about all of them today because we just don't have time. But I will talk about the um, a couple of the more popular ones. Um, so, but but first of all, let's talk about schema management. So schema management is the the free tool that we make available for everyone. If you if you want it, um, then please let your AE or, or CSM know, and they can get it turned on for you. Um, so this is schema management here. It allows you to effectively modify the schemas of uh, of data sets that you have in Domo without needing to use um, a data flow. So that, that's that's pretty neat. Um, I'll I'll open up this one so we can just have a look at uh, sort of how it looks. So um, this is a data set. Uh, if you click on the wrench, you can see you've got a number of options here. Um, cloning is pretty cool. Um, if you have a connector. Um, data set, then you can clone that connector data set. It'll clone all of the settings that went into that connector. Um, and then uh, you can sort of go in and modify it afterwards, which is pretty sweet if there's a connector that has perhaps a lot of configuration and you want to save some time in in terms of configuring them. That's super cool. That is, su oh my god, you just saved half an hour of work every time I have to spin up a new Snowflake connector. Waiting for the Snowflake drop down, waiting for the Snowflake yes. drop down. Yes, oh my God, Obviously shoot me now. 
Yes. Um, yeah. Um, you can do other things here, like you can see you can clear and you can copy the ID. Um, if I click on edit, then you can copy the ID as in just go what I do in the UI, copy paste the GUID. That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, but for, for those of you who don't know that the data set ID is up in the, the URL when you open up a data set. So this is another way to get to that. Um, otherwise, uh, you can modify the column names here. Uh, you can change the column type, data type if you want to. Um, you can add columns as well. Mm. Um, and and you when you change the column type, do you know that it locks the column type? I'm thinking of my users who up the upload data from Excel, and today it's GL account numbers, which should be recognized as a, a string instead of numeric, but the ingest process recognizes it as, or auto guesses that it's an integer and cuts out my leading zeros. Yeah, so it, it will rem it will recall it. Yeah, so if you if you come in here and you change from an integer to a, a decimal, perhaps or a double, if it's really big, then um, then it'll be remembered next time you upload your data into Doma. That's cool. That is Basically, very cool. One more question: If I then put this data into a data flow, am I still able to change the data types in the data flow, or is it? like you have to manage it through this schema thing or can you still manage it in data flow because i have i have one use case where one group of people likes to use it as an integer and another group of people likes to use it as text so i'm just curious you know am i able to keep that distinction or if you define it in a schema manager then you're no longer able to change it other places so i mean once once you've modified it here it, it's still just a data set so if you feed it into your data flow then you can you can do whatever you need to do in there and if it's if it's a connector it also could get overwritten right like so like it's a good if like say you fix your query so it's coming in as text but originally came in as integer this is a good use case oh i could change that and then rerun it but if when you rerun the connector it still sees an integer it's going to try to switch it back so it's again it's it's not it's it's a one-time state change if something else changes around it then you know you, you still like a work with that so that that's the schema management um does anyone have any questions uh, I do actually. So I saw in the drop down of actions you can perform, you can clear the data. How does that work with a partition enabled data set? Will that drop, will that clear all of the partition tags or just? That is an excellent question not, that yeah, I don't know. Not I think it will just clear everything, all partitions, mm. but we haven't done I live to stump you guys. <laughs> no, no, it's just, uh, yeah, with partitioning, that's just an area that I struggle with. Are you able to apply um, upsert keys on this schema management? No, not in here. Is it coming? It should come. Consider this a feature well, request. Uh, well, yeah, we can certainly add it to the list. <laughs> yeah, because right now the only way I can enable upsert keys would be outside of Dome on the CLI, right? Yeah, that's a good one. I'll I'll definitely make a note of that one and pass it along to the uh, development team. And then, in terms of since we're on the topic of upsert and partitioning, is uh, if there were a partition enabled data set, well, I guess yeah. Is there any kind of artifact of that here under schema management, or is that outside of what we call schema? I would say that's outside of the schema. But it might be nice to have that information here. OK. All right. These are all good feature requests, definitely. We'll add them to the list and, and pass them on. It's definitely pain points that, um, that my team has as we scale our use of um, you know, non-traditional data accumulate, like not a recursive data flow. right? If you don't want to use a recursive data flow, you should be using upsert or partitioning. Okay, well, how is that supported in the UI? Yeah, anyway, un un understood. All right, I'm not going to badger you anymore. More cool, more cool tools. <laughs> um, so that that's the free one. Um, so yeah, if you want you want access to that, please speak to your account team. I think that the next one I probably want to talk about will be the PDP automation because the, P the PDP automation uh, was really the first tool that I used and. And we used it to great success with one of our larger customers out of um, out of Europe. 
so they they had a requirement where um, where they they needed it so that if a data set was shared by a user to someone who shouldn't have access to it and and as as you everyone on this call probably knows if you have the ability to um, edit a data set or edit data sets in domo and you have a data set that's been shared with you then you can go and share it with anyone right <laughs> a bit of a security flaw um, but uh, but in this case what we did was we uh, ran PDP across every single data set in their instance using the PDP automation and we turned on all rows. Um, and for those of you who don't know, if you turn on the all rows um, rule and you, you sort of turn on PDP, then if a data set is shared with someone and they're not in the all, row, all, all rows um, PDP rule, then all that they get access to is essentially an, an empty data set. So with the PDP automation, we were able to combine data from Domo stats to get information about every single data set in Domo. And then we fed it into a job and I'll, I'll show you what a job looks like because we've got one here. Um, so this is a configuration data set. If I open it up, so this is just an example of how one could look. Um, but it's, it's it's just got the vital information for the PDP essentially. Um, so yeah, we created a, a data set looks like this, but for every single data set, so that uh, we could apply PDP to every single data set. And and something I guess to highlight here is that when when you have a uh, a data set in here, then PDP will automatically be turned on when the the job runs. This like enable PDP here. Wait, I'm sorry. I feel like I missed something really critical. Can you go back to that config? Sure. Oh. Okay, so what is this config document telling me? I see a list of data sets. Mm -hmm. I see a list of departments. So each one of these columns corresponds to an element of the PDP configuration. So this is the data set that you want the PDP to apply to. Mm -hmm. This is just the name of the policy. It's sort of, you know, it's less important, but you can see down the bottom there all rows, right? Um, then you have the column that you want the PDP to be applied to. And then this is the value that the PDP will look for. So, you know, when department is IT, department is finance, I have here a dynamic PDP rule. Um, so, you, you know, dynamic PDP is supported. And then this is the group that the PDP will apply to for individual. I I will, I just, I called this out in the chat too, and this will be my last thing before I make sure I get on my plane, is um, the documentation is really quite thorough. The team has done a really nice job, especially given how quickly we've been releasing these. So even if you, I was telling Ashley, even if you haven't paid yet, like you can see the tool, you can click on it, but all this stuff, like the nuances of like, okay, well this column, you could put in PDP all for this, or you could put in a, a named attribute and how does that work? All that's in the help file too, so I think, it's it's a really good resource on how we do that um, as well. So, um, and I know Carl, you can show where it is. I think once you turn it on, you click up top. There's a little question mark, but even when it's not enabled, you can get to the help file. You might be able to even show it, Carl, on um, the new one. I don't know if they have the help file set up yet, but that, it's a really good resource. And it, again, kudos to our engineers to take it and actually do that because we know that makes a big difference. Um, so yeah. Yeah, as Ben says, the documentation is quite extensive. So I just Google Domo Governance Toolkit, and then you, you can get to the governance tools very easily. And you can see the toolkit uh, tools all listed here. Um, mm. Doesn't look like Dataset Watchdog is there yet, but everything else is there. I love it. We get little spoilers of what's to come. <laughs> this is why we show up to Data Crew, guys. <laughs> ben, do not miss your flight. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the the help article for what i've just shown you yeah so it's um you got all of the information that you need here that's rad and if we go back here um, um yeah so does that sort of answer your question as to, to what's being shown here and and so again i'm just playing i'm not pretending like i'm dumb i'm actually have not very familiar with the PDP automation parts. So the assumption is, is that I actually have a column in my data set called department, or I have a yes. column in my data set called position. And that's what it's applying the filtering rule um, in the value column to. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it.
And does this okay. does this PDP automation? So you actually have to call out which data sets are getting the PDP applied to it. So for for example, like in the, in the use case you mentioned, um, it doesn't just blanket across every data set in your instance. You have to call them out individually. And so if somebody else you know copies a data set or something and then shares it, that data set will no longer have the PDP. Is that correct? A lot, so, yeah, a lot yes. of people will use like tagging and then you use the build those stats. If can, so anything tagged with this, you apply sort of some of those connective tissue, right? Or, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Carl. Or Ooh, if you don't yeah. have, if you don't have tagging, you could build a data set. You could pull in your data set schema or data set details yeah. that has your schema. Yeah. Basically any data set that has the column called department Exactly. And then do a cross join and same so, same yeah. results. So, so you you can add data sets based on their tag. So if somebody just tags a data set with let's say PDP, just, just then it could magic. automatically yeah. it could automatically throw that into this. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. That's got this lots is of why doing cases. it as a data set is so powerful. You can just you can use magic. Oh. You can do something else. You can sort of load in your HR data, combine it with Domo stat, and then whatever. And so like. I feel like so often, I think this is one of the things we learned with this is like trying to like, we could have created this as like a black box where like you point and click and then we would have lost all this logic, right? This is, you control the data set and you drive what the logic is and that way we don't know everything that you're gonna do and you can control it, so. That's super cool. Guys, we have 15 minutes to the top of the call. I really love this. We need to hit some more tools. Otherwise people will be like, I came here for an hour and I only saw two tools. This is really cool. Um, so I think the next one I just want to talk about is um, the user management. So user management um, uh, is is sort of like a, an option for our customers who don't have um, don't have an identity provider and they want an easy way to to give um, to give their users attributes. Um, essentially, uh, for those of you who are sort of familiar with um, uh, uploading the, the user attributes here, you can do sort of like a bulk import. Um, and, it, and you can assign these attributes there. Um, it's, it's another way for you to do that, but it, you could do it using Domo, using a data set, which is really quite nice. But the use case specifically that we faced, um, and we faced it a couple of times actually, it, re it does relate to single sign-on. So with, um, with single sign-on, uh, users are um, allocated, uh, I guess, a user profile in Domo when they log on for the first time. But when they leave the organization, they're not actually removed from the user list because um, it, it's, it doesn't really work that way, right? You, only ch changes are made to a user profile when they log on using their single sign-on. So obviously if they don't log on because they've left the organization, no changes are made. Um, but there was, a, there, there, are, there was a situation where a user left an organization then they came back in a different role and they logged into Domo and they had their old access. So what that customer wanted to do was they wanted to remove the users who had left their organization. Um, so in order to do that, we connected to their um, their single sign-on, which I think was Okta. And we have an Okta connector, which we can pull in like the data from Okta. So we, we pulled in like the user list from Okta. We looked at the users who had um, had their account, had left the organization. And there's a number of different ways you can do that. Um, but uh, we then sort of looked at the users who had left and then removed them from a list of users um, in the instance and ran the job here. And as you can see here, if you put, if you run a, a data set through one of these jobs um, and you select delete orphaned users, then any users who are not in that configuration data set will be deleted from your instance. Ah, so this will basically try, you use this to say, this is the list of all of the users I should have. And if they're if I have a user that is not in that list, they get deleted. Exactly. Okay. Huh. So, but, but it's called I mean, add Motocorp users. Why isn't it called delete Motocorp users? Well, I, I I use this job to add a whole bunch of users to this instance, um, like all of them, <laughs> for, for testing purposes. But got I it, didn't. Got it. Got it. Got it bit of a funny story actually i didn't realize at the time that the the default option was to um you know how when you get added to an instance you get a you know you've been demoed email sent sent to you um i didn't realize that was the default so when I, I added like everyone to to this instance in domo like in the company domo so i, I sent a you got domo email out to like 800 people <laughs> nicely done 
Uh, wait, but the, so this is basically bulk upload. That's that's um yeah that's exactly what it is. Okay, nice, nice. Does um, it also give you the ability to like set your column like in bulk when you bulk upload you can map, I think you can map your columns. This column should be department. This column should be. Mm. Do we have that functionality here, or do we just have to assume that the configuration data set is arriving in the correct format? Um, I, you need to use the same format, right? It, it's got the same configuration as the as the the bulk um, upload or mm, bulk import. Mm, mm, mm. It's exactly. And then the you same. can create a log file. Oh man, I love that. Yep. Love that. Uh, so I will talk about. Um, well, I think we should probably do observability metrics because we did talk about that one earlier on. So with observability metrics, this is how you can pull in Domo stats from other instances into um, into into this instance. Um, we've got a job here. I don't think this is my job, but um, but that's fine. So if we if we sort of do edit, then you you have to. Um, you have to set up a, a key into another instance. Um, you know, you, you sort of do that uh, as as you would um, create an access token. You know, any other way. Um, and then once you've configured that, you can choose the data sets that you want to pull in. Um, so this one's pulling in data sets, but there's a whole bunch of um, uh, available reports here. What is very interesting is that there are reports available in this tool that are not available currently in Domo stats. And, mm -hmm. and I, I expect that some of them will eventually come out into Domo stats. For example, we have ETL inputs and outputs. Obviously, that, that's available in, in the Domo governance, but, but not available in Domo stats currently. Um, and then these guys here, scheduled report history, recipients, and scheduled reports. Currently, there's no way that you can get this data except from observability metrics. <laughs> I wonder if my coworkers on the call, I'm like, I recognize some of these report requests. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, uh, a company that I've worked with has hundreds of instances of Domo and we're trying to keep track of like who's logging in, how are they engaging with content, right? What data sets have been deployed? Um, what who are our who has been assigned an admin role in xyz instance in our purview right so having one place where we can consolidate all of the domo stats from all of the different instances and we you know bulk analyze our estate has been a really um powerful um addition to our to our workflow so yeah i can't recommend this strongly enough it is getting worked on and bugs are being or features are being added rapidly mm -hmm. um but yeah definitely has been a really cool feature for us and i think my one of my favorite parts about this is that as you can see you can add it to an existing data set so you can use this tool to add everything to the same data set well mm -hmm. like like for example data sets you, you probably want to add all of the data sets in your children instance into the same data set um data set and and like this is this is massive because it means then that you don't need to worry about bringing in every single like data set and then combining them all in the data flow. Uh, mm -hmm. The combination is already done for you. Yeah, previously we would have to hack it. We would have to hack it using data set copy or yeah, to, to consolidate data from different instances. But this tooling is pretty solid right there. Hey, um, yeah, Ashley, go ahead. Okay, so can you add multiple instances here? Is that just the... How does that work? Yeah, so if you need to add multiple instances, it would be done in multiple jobs. So each job is is for one instance, but multiple data sets. Uh, as you can see, you can have multiple data sets. Um, but um, but if yeah, if you wanted to have a second instance, you'd need a second job. That's sweet. This is super cool. I, I really like that you can add it to the, like to an existing data set. It's awesome. And does that that doesn't count like towards row count, does it, for the uh, the consumption model? Uh, well, yes. Yeah. So if you're on consumption pricing, then the governance toolkit does consume credits. Gotcha. You should totally fight your AE on that one. You should, my yeah. 10 cents, you shouldn't have to pay for governing your instance of Domo. Like you already paid for owning Domo. But that's not a conversation and, for now. I would say fight your AE. And you're paying for this premium feature of governance. 
right? You're paying for the premium governance toolkit. Why do you also have to pay for the consumption of the premium data? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, fight, those, fight, the, fight your AE on that one. Go, those those rows clear. exist somewhere else. So you're just, I'm, I'm wondering like when those rows come in, because I know like federated data sets don't count towards your row count there. And so are these coming in as federated or are these coming in as like, like real materialized rows? They're real. So they would be materialized, but to be clear, if you're on consumption pricing, then you're not paying for, you don't pay for the governance toolkit. It's included in consumption Wait, pricing. What? That's, what? Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's so, and by consumption, is there other things that the consumption model includes? Everything. Let's, Everything. wait, 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 guys, Everything. we are yeah. super, we are super oh, limited on time. <laughs> Let's pick this up. I mean, this is a real, like, pricing is, it's a, it's a whole other conversation, but um, okay. In the last seven minutes, it looks like we got votes for Watchdog. Um, Carl, I oh. I don't want to I don't want to get anyone in trouble talking about features of Domo that haven't been released yet. So, um, is it? Well, I can I can give a high cleared? level question okay. about the data set watchdog um okay. I, I mean the, the information is there so this i think that everyone should see data set watchdog as an available tool um even if it perhaps isn't quite ready to go yet but really the this was sort of um i guess this was a request that we've had from multiple customers but the goal was to give our customers insights into when data sets change by unusual amounts when they change um, or perhaps even before they change. Uh, so I don't know if we do it before, because I, I don't know exactly how this works, but certainly this will alert you when the changes occur, uh, which is a big difference to say the Domo stats, um, like any of the Domo stats data sets, which will only notify you when they reload, which you know at, at best would probably be every hour or so. So this, this gives you a lot more control and um and power when it comes to understanding when when bad things are happening to your data sets so just to clarify what we're seeing in the um uh in the um governance toolkit i, I see premium uh, next to all of the the tools does that mean we need to we don't have access or uh, they're premium because we don't we don't have access or or, yeah, or if so we can see them we, then we do have access so if you see premium, then it means that you have to, you, you'll need to purchase it. So you can okay. speak to your AE or CSM to, to, to purchase it. Alternatively, you can, you can probably speak to them and get a, a trial. We do do a trial for the, the governance toolkit. Sure. Okay. Thanks. I am checking to see if we have it available in Domo Dojo for you to play with today. Give me a sec. So it looks like everything except Watchdog is available to touch and play with in the Domo Dojo instance. So if you're not okay. part of Domo Dojo, let us know. And okay, we'll get but you for, in there. for that, we might need to update some roles because I looked in the Domo Dojo and I don't have access to it. And I think because we need those grants, they might uh, want to look at the roles that we have in there. Oh, yes. Everyone just put in pretty much as a Everyone's privilege. Or privilege. Yeah, yeah. privilege. Okay. Yeah. So we might need to just update the privilege role to include those two grants. Fine. Yep, the pipeline we'll let you in. Yeah. If you are not part of Domo Dojo, send an email to me or, uh, yeah, I'll just put my name in there. Brian also helps manage that. Um, but since he's got other things going on in his life, um, yeah, just cool. pop me an email at je at onyxreporting.com and we'll get you added to the Domo Dojo. Um, cool. Uh, we are taking votes for the next kind of data crew session. Like, what kinds of things are you guys interested in knowing about? You know, um, do we need to bring Carl back? Do we need to talk about something else entirely? Does this format work for you guys? Please let me know in an email again at je at onyxreporting.com. We're trying to bring this content to you guys so that we can, um, let's say, help Domo build the muscle memory of training people who actually do the implementation stuff. Um, so hopefully we can see more sessions like this from different parts of product um, as well. So if there's something that you guys want to know more about, pop it, send me an email or put it in chat and I'll go through it later. Um, if you guys have questions that we didn't get a chance to cover, again, send me an email and I'll try to follow up with Carl separately from this to, to see if we can't make sure all of your questions are answered. Um, thank you everyone for joining today.
Hope you guys got something valuable out of it. And uh, we'll catch you later. Carl, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.